Hey guys, Mike here. So this video is going to be about pouring a concrete floor inside a basement. Now I just want to take a minute here and ask you guys, most of you guys that watch my videos aren't subscribed to the channel yet. So if you like concrete, if you like this video, if you enjoy watching concrete videos, please go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. Hit the bell notification. I come out with a couple videos a week and I'd really appreciate that. So what we're doing is we live in Maine and in Maine we have a lot of freeze and thaw cycles. So most of the homes that are built in Maine have these concrete foundations. And these walls, the footings on these walls will be four feet below uh, finished grade level on the outside of the house. So the frost in the ground doesn't usually go down below four feet. That way these walls will never move and the house will never move in the winter. So we, we get to pour a lot of these concrete floors inside basements like this. Probably a probably hundred of them a year at least inside a basement. Now this one we didn't have that great of access to. We can only get the concrete trucks to that one side over there. So we had to use a couple different size chutes and uh, what we call like a, a hopper type boot when we're pouring the concrete over the wall. That way we don't get splattered with concrete. And the reason we do this, you know, the reason we use that 16 foot chute and the 8 foot chute is to save the contractor, you know, a little bit of money from having to get a pump truck. It's, it costs about $900 to get a pump truck to pump a foundation like this, a floor like this. It's, this is about a 1600 square foot floor, so right around 20 yards of concrete. And just, you know, 900 bucks is 900 bucks saving. So if I can save the contractor a little money by using the chutes, then that's that's what we do. So what we're doing is we're pouring 3,000 PSI concrete today with microfiber in it. And I'm basically just hired to pour and finish the concrete. I don't get in on the mix design. I don't get in on, you know, the subgrade prep. I didn't do the, the grading of the, the crushed rock there. Um, I don't get in on any type of like vapor barrier if they want that or if they want wire mesh in this that's that's up to the general contractor not me I'm just the subcontractor so and I'm working for the foundation guy here today and the foundation guy he's right there on the right in that white shirt he's the guy that did the foundation his name's Jim so he does really good foundation work if uh, you know, if you, if you need a foundation like this and you live in Maine, just leave a comment below and I'll, I'll hook you up with Jim. But let me know, let me know down in the comments, guys. Number one, you know, where are you from? What state are you from? And, and do you do concrete floors or foundations similar to this in your state? And if you do, you know, that would be good to know. If you don't, let me know. Let me know that too. You know, what state are you in? Are you in a state that that doesn't get winters like we do and that's why you don't do found you know foundations like this do you do mostly house slabs or let me know what you guys do in the state you live in so we're getting we're pretty much getting that 10 yard truck dumped out and because we got a couple extra hands today helping us we can have a few guys doing one thing and some of us doing another so we're getting our pads all magged around the outside edges to floor grade and then we shot some pads in the middle using the laser and struck those with a regular 2x4 magnesium screed. And now we can use those to go by to use the, the power screed here, the screed demon from MBW. So this makes it pretty easy to screed floors like this when you're using a vibratory screed. Really, the most of the work is done by the two, got the two people raking. I got Tia over there on the left and Luke on the right. They're both really experienced rakers, so they really make doing the, the using the screed demon pretty easy. You see, we got a little bit too much concrete in there, so they had to pull some out. And now we'll just we'll finish that bay while the other guys get the rest of that truck dumped out. That way, we can get the truck right back to the batch man, and you know he can load it out for somebody else. That's why they, they like porn for us, because we dump these trucks right out fast, and then they get them back, and then they can re rebatch them to somebody else. And when you do that on a daily basis, you know, then you call it for concrete last minute. You, they'll usually go out of their way to try to help you out. That's what we found anyway. So Luke went up there with a little hand screed and did that little piece up there. Now he's going to grab the, the screed demon 
and pull that bay down with Tia raking the concrete behind him. And then we'll get that bow floated. Now the bow float we're using in the hand screeds are from Marshalltown. So we try to get most of our, our hand tools and our finishing tools, the ones we use by hand from Marshalltown. Um, I'll have a link for all those stuff down in the description if you want to check them out. And then if you want more training, like if you want to learn how to do this kind of stuff like we do, concrete floors, slabs, pool decks, patios, stamp concrete, I've got a training academy down in the description of the video. The, the link is down there called the Concrete Underground. So make sure you check that out if you want to learn how to do stuff like us. If you want to get into the concrete business, you know, I, I help you inside the Concrete Underground with that stuff. Right now, we got to get this basement floor poured. We're also doing the garage today. That'll be on another video. I just I wanted to show you guys how it is pouring over the top of a wall like this in a basement. It's it's a little more difficult than just backing the truck up to a slab and pouring a slab. You got to have the right chutes, or you got to either pump it one or the other. So we're getting the first truck dumped out. We got the second truck up truck up there mixing up, just waiting. Got to get the chutes on him and get him get him over the wall. And then we'll get him dumped out. Those pads you see in the middle, those footing type of pads, those are for lolly columns. And those columns will hold up uh, beams that, that go under the subfloor. So those are load-bearing pads in this foundation. And then they'll run their floor joists, you know, across over the top of those beams. And then build the house up from that. But that's pretty common construction here in Maine. So we're starting on this second 10 yards. We'll get this dumped out. We'll get most of it dumped out, then we'll start screeding it. We, we're pouring probably around a six inch slump. All the concrete we use for our floors has what's called a mid-range water reducer in it. And that's put right in at the batch plant. They put that right in. It's about five or six ounces of mid-range water reducer per 100 pounds of cement. So each yard of concrete on a 3,000 PSI has right around 550 pounds of cement in it. So you, you know, you're right around the 20 ounces of mid-range water reducer per yard of concrete. And that's built right into the price for us per yard. You know, I, we pay right around probably 120 bucks a yard for 3,000 PSI right in that ballpark with tax and everything. So what the mid-range water reducer does is it allows us to pour just a little bit looser slump like a six or a six and a half without having to add water to it to get it up to that slump. So it helps keep the strength where it should be without, without adding too much water. And it just makes the pour go much easier for us. You know, when you pour concrete floors every day, you want to be able to pour a decent slump. If you have to pour really stiff concrete every day, that's just... I don't know. For me, that's just not what I want to do. I This is enjoyable right here, pouring concrete like this. And if I'm pouring concrete at a three or a four inch slump every day, that's just, you know, someone else can do that. I used to do that when I was younger and we did all commercial work, but not anymore. They got chemicals that'll make it easier to pour with, you know. So that's what we use. So Luke grabbed the screed demon on this bay. He's getting this leveled out. Yeah, I got Darren and Harvey puddling behind him now. Both of them guys are really experienced. It just makes having experienced guys puddling makes the screeding process go real easy. You can see as Luke's pulling that back, he's probably got it half throttle, and he's leaving a little line on each end of the screed. That tells him he's he's got that nice and flat. And you, you know, going half throttle vibrates some of the aggregate down and brings some of the paste up. So it makes bolt floating it really easy. You know, we don't have to use bump cutters or, or really, really wide bolt floats to level out our floors after we screed them because they get pretty level just the way they are. You can see we use that four foot bolt float and it's got rounded edges on it. And there's no, there's no gaps under it when we bolt float. There's no humps there that he's got to take out. Everything's just really nice and level. That comes with experience, too. I mean, just like everything, when you do it a lot, you get really good at what you do. You get fast at what you do. This 
this took us probably all in all about 35 minutes, maybe 30 to 40 minutes to put this floor in over the wall. So that's not too bad. So Luke's going to finish out that bay, then he's going to turn it and come out the other side. You can see we got that kind of what we call a boot on the end of that chute from the concrete truck. And that just helps keep the concrete from splattering too bad so we can kind of put it in the place we want to put it in. It just makes, makes everything go a little bit easier. I'll have a link to one of those down in the description if you guys want to check them out. We use those all the time over the wall like this. I mean... If you don't pour over the wall, you're obviously not really going to have a need for one, but for guys that do floors like us or even footings inside a, you know, a hole like this, that would be pretty handy. You can see how easy it is screeding with that screed demon. That's, that thing just takes a lot of the work out of screeding a concrete floor. So we're going to work our way back to that wall that's four feet tall instead of trying to climb out the wall that's eight feet high just to make it a little bit easier to climb up over the wall this one was you know pouring around this foundation like this is something that we don't we don't usually pour around these if they're not backfilled on the outside sometimes sometimes the contractors don't want to backfill with dirt on the outside because they're afraid the dirt's going to push in on the foundation and crack it. But what that makes our job even more difficult when they don't backfill the outside. Then we're having to jump over, you know, a ditch that's four feet deep or eight feet deep sometimes just to get in and out of the foundation. And we, we tend to want to stay away from that just because we don't want anybody getting hurt. So we try to make sure they're all backfilled like this one is. T is finishing up that bow float in there then we can turn that screed and come out the other way and jump out of this thing but how many of you guys have a vibrating screed like this you know let me know down in the comments if you do what what brand do you have if you're thinking about getting one you know let me know let me know what you're looking for um, we've been using the screed demon all summer and we really like it it's really lightweight we got a 12 foot board on it so you know, it screeds, it screeds a good size floor pretty fast. Probably weighs about 25 pounds. It's got that Honda motor on it, so it starts really nice. You know, MBW makes that. It's made in the USA, so it, it's really good high quality equipment. Anything, anything flat and level like this floor, we like using a, a vibrating screed on. If the floors have some slope to them, or they, they slope to a drain or something, we'll generally screed that by hand just to make sure the slopes don't sag on us. But when it's nice and level like this, there's, there's really nothing that beats a vibrating screed like that screed demon. So we're waiting for the bull floater to get that done. And T is going to jump out and get out of the way. Luke's going to pull that down. Then I'm going to finish screeding this out by hand. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think it's pretty difficult pouring over a wall like this? Or have you never poured over a wall like this? You know, whether you live in Australia, Canada, England, you know, wherever you live, let me know if you guys pour concrete floors inside basements like this. So we've got a little too much concrete in there, which is, I guess that's better than not having enough and having to bucket it in. So Luke's just... Pulling a little bit of creed out with the bucket. We'll just dump it over the edge. And then I'm going to grab like a five foot screed and get myself screeded right out of this thing. Then we can jump up there and do that garage after. We probably got about, I don't know, about a wheelbarrow too much concrete in there. You can see as I screed like that, I'm kind of kicking kicking my, my boot prints and filling them in as I kick so I can just keep moving backwards. Luke's just keeping an eye on me, make sure it doesn't get too low. That's when screeding gets hard is when the concrete's too low behind you and you gotta constantly stop to fill in. 
You always want to be pulling back just a little bit of concrete when you're screeding. It was really hot today too. It was This was a stretch of weather where the temperatures were in the 90s and then inside a foundation like this it's probably 10 or 15 degrees hotter. It's just like an oven inside there. So there, I'm going to finish that up and we'll get that bolt loaded. Well, that's it, guys. That's how we pour a concrete floor inside a basement like this. Thanks for watching. Again, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. If you like these videos, please hit the like button. Share it with your friends, and we'll see you on the next one.